This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there, check it out and welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this date. And on this day, September the 21st, in the year 1982, the NFL faced something that they had never seen before. A strike. A player strike at that. So anyway, the 1982 NFL season was humongous. Before the strike, the Oakland Raiders moved to Los Angeles. As the jury in the court trial said that the NFL violated antitrust laws when he declined to move from Oakland to Los Angeles. So that meant that the Raiders would be playing in Los Angeles at the LA Coliseum bring back football in Los Angeles after the Rams left for Anaheim Stadium, which is still part of Los Angeles per se, but they're still the LA Rams. The Minnesota Vikings would move indoors to the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. The Saints had a quarterback controversy. They got Ken Stabler to sign with them, so they traded Archie Manning, who was the lifeblood of the New Orleans Saints, to the Houston Oilers for an offensive tackle. Can you believe it? So, anyway. Before the 1982 season, there was one major thing. It would be the new Sunday time slots. All Sunday afternoon games began at one of two windows, one Eastern time or four Eastern time. From 1970 to 81, games would begin at 1 p.m. local time, regardless of the home team. Except when Denver, when they kicked up at 2 Mountain Time. So if you were in the Central Time Zone, your game started at 2 o'clock. Now that. Baltimore was given an exception because they had a Baltimore ordinance that Sunday games would have to start no earlier than 2 p.m., I guess for church purposes. Which is kind of strange because Baltimore doesn't seem that way. It would be like New York or even a town like Denver or... Even Houston would do that, but yeah. That ordinance would actually be one of the main reasons why Robert Ursay wanted to move the team to Indianapolis. He wanted the games played at 1 Eastern Time, not 2 Eastern Time. Okay, so it's an extra hour. So anyway. <laughs> anyway, so... Then came the 1982 strike. It started on Tuesday, September 21st, 1982. So anyway, there were a lot of issues and all that. In 1974, they actually nearly struck, too. They didn't like the Roselle rule. There's an antitrust and all that. The rule in 74, named after Roselle, allowed the commissioner to award compensation to a team losing a free agent if both the signing team and the team the player was departing could not come to agreement on compensation. So, anyway, the strike, that 74 strike happened just until August 74. The courts really favored the players. So, the Collective market agreement, which they reached in 1977, was due to expire in 1982. And it happened. The, the NFL Players Union wanted a wage scale based on percentage of gross revenues being implemented. The NFL PA says, sure, for 55%. And the, I don't remember, like 40%, 45%. Doesn't matter and all that. So, anyway, they were not too happy in all of that. So the NFL PA had two All-Star games, one of the All-Star games and all that. Those games only drew a combined 14,000 people. So the question on everyone's lips would be, like the football fans, what do you do? Because after all, the NFL is the final part of Sundays in the fall and early winter. So, unfortunately, there's not much to do. 
However, the three major networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS, needed to figure something out. Fox was not in existence until 1986. So, NBC had the bright idea to pick up the rights to the CFL. ESPN had the rights to CFL games, but NBC picked up those rights. And it was great. NBC's going to do Canadian football. So, it was amazing. The CFL would be coming to NBC and feature Canadian teams and to put to rest the Americans thinking, oh, Canadian football is no good. Unfortunately, NBC would run into a buzzsaw with that problem. The first four CFL games were blowouts. There wasn't an exciting game. I mean, with Edmonton crushing it in 1982. On their way to trying to get to their fifth, on their way to their fifth Grey Cup in a row, alongside the Argos, it just wasn't meant to be. NBC decided to give up, despite the fact that Merlin Olsen and Dick Enberg were doing games and all that. And with poor ratings, they gave up and just did movies. CBS, with no football, decided to air some football, like replaying the previous Super Bowl and doing a few other things to do with football. They even did Division Three football with Pat Summerall and John Madden calling a game between Baldwin, Wallace, and Wittenberg. However, the winner, in a sense, was ABC. Yeah, they had no Monday Night Football. But ABC won Sunday because they didn't broadcast Sunday games like CBS and NBC did. ABC only did Monday Night Football. That's why they kind of had the advantage. And with that advantage, ABC decided to add some baseball to the mix. So ABC managed to get you know, baseball games on Sunday, baseball games on Sundays, because usually Sunday afternoons were reserved for football. So ABC kind of won out because the baseball coverage was huge. And this was the year that saw Baltimore and Milwaukee play on the final day of the regular season on ABC to determine who would be the Eastern Division champ, which Milwaukee did, and went on to the World Series. But the players would revolt against their main guy, Ed Garvey, who is the head of the NFLPA. So, thanks to them turning on Garvey, the strike ended November 16th, making sure it lasted for 57 days. So the NFL had to think about what to do. So they decided to reduce the schedule from 16 to 9, and the playoffs would have eight teams from each conference instead of the standard five. They got a five-year rat agreement ratified, severance package to players upon retirement, increasing salaries and postseason play, and bonuses based on your experience. And the NFLPA did get uh, copies of all player contracts. So, in the end, they kind of won, but in a way, they lost. So, anyway, weeks 3 to 10 were canceled, in a sense. The NFL decided to make a weeks 11 to 16 play to schedule. And then the games that were originally were week 3 would be played following the completion of some resumed regular season as a Week 17 with the playoffs having to be pushed back a week. However, they changed their mind. They decided to use Week 17 to hold various intra-division games to have teams found out home and away games and then increase in attendance. So in a sense, it was over. Both teams had eight. Both conferences had eight teams moving on. Anyway. So, anyway, the AFC saw the LA Raiders win with an 81 mark. Miami and Cincy both won seven. Pittsburgh, San Diego, and the Jets won six games. New England won five. But there was a three team logjam between Cleveland, Buffalo, and Seattle for that eighth and final playoff spot. I would have given it to Buffalo. But no, Cleveland had a better conference record. There were four and three. Compared to the Bills three and three and the Seahawks three and five. The 
In the NFC, Washington was eight and one. The Cowboys were six and three for second. Green Bay took third at five three and a dismal tie against the Baltimore Colts. The only tie in that year. Minnesota, Atlanta, St. Louis, and Tampa all won five games. So they were from three to seven. And the eight seed again had to go to a tiebreaker. Detroit, New Orleans, and the Giants. Detroit had a better conference record, four and four to the Saints three and five, the Giants three to five. So, yeah, that was huge and all that. So, the strike made sure that there were 16 teams in the class instead of 10, which was at the time, as I said. The NFC version of the playoffs, no upsets were made. The better team won. Well, Washington took down Dallas. In the meantime, the AFC... So the the six seed New York Jets, Shock Cincy, and the Raiders to get to the AFC title game, which they got taken down by Miami 14 0 next to AJ Dewey's three interceptions. Also, the whining of the Jets fans because, you know, there were rumors that they after a rainstorm, they didn't put a tarp on Miami's field to slow down the Jets wide receivers. That could be true, but it's gamesmanship. What do you expect? Washington did win the Super Bowl, so that's good for them. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do.